Sports. We are took the Rays extra innings on Wednesday afternoon to finally dispose of the New York Yankees for the first time in 2015 with James Loney coming through in the 13th inning. Now, Tampa Bay's road trip makes a U-turn and heads back to the drop where Adam Jones and the Baltimore Orioles will be the home team and bat last. to game four of a nine game road trip for the Rays. Oh wait a minute. We're home back in Tampa Bay and welcome to Tropicana Field. The Rays making a detour to come home to take on the Orioles. Rays will be hitting first and the Orioles playing this as a home game in terms of batting first batting last but because we are at Tropicana Field this is a home game for the Rays. Figure that one out. With Brian Anderson and Dwayne Stats, great to have you aboard here. Well, it will be Alex Colome on the mound tonight for the Rays. Rays happy to get him back because he's a step closer to having the pitching rotation all in one piece in one order. And season delayed. You know, Alex Calame came into spring training a little bit late with these issues. Then all of a sudden, about with pneumonia, cost him a couple of weeks. So he misses the month of April. But here on May the 1st, you're going to get a chance to see him. And the little sample size that we've gotten over the last couple of seasons, he has been outstanding. Six career starts. The record very good. But look at that earned run average at 1.30. You know, he's got that quick fastball, good sink on it, got some explosiveness to it, and also that wipeout slider. Those are his two primary expect to see him charge ready to go very confident young man you see the pitching match up there the Rays saw Chris Tillman opening day he's five and six against the Rays but in his recent starts against the Rays he has been lights out and of course Alex Colome Rays hoping to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 maybe 100 pitches out of Colome here tonight Rays and the Orioles coming up Rays will be hitting first here at Tropicana Field
welcome you back to Tropicana Field where the Rays and the Orioles will begin a three game series originally scheduled for Camden Yards. Instead here at Tropicana Field as a result of the unrest in Baltimore. Tonight's lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Rays will lead it off with the D.H. David DeJesus. Steven Sousa Jr. hit second in front of Ashubo Cabrera. Longoria Loney and Forsythe down the middle. Kierbeier hit seventh. He'll be in center with Brandon Geyer in left and Rene Rivera behind the plate batting ninth. I'm taking the mound here tonight for the Baltimore Orioles right hander Chris Tillman and what an interesting start to the season for Chris two starts against the Boston Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays two earned runs in 12 innings of work two starts against the Toronto Blue Jays 14 earned runs in seven innings of work and that's where you see the breakout there with his numbers also that walk total 13 walks to go along with 22 hits in 19 innings just been far too many base runners against Chris Tillman let's take a look at that Baltimore Oriole defense as it lines up behind him brought to you by BMW the outfield left right we have Alejandro De Aza, Adam Jones and Delman Young across the infield third to first Manny Machado Everett Cabrera Steve Pierce and Chris Davis Caleb Joseph will be behind the plate Well, there's Steve Pierce out at second base. This is his first start ever professionally at second base. All set to play baseball. And the first pitch of this game from Tillman is in there for a strike. First pitch presented by Pincher Penny. Nothing in two. De Jesus starts the night at 277. No ball, two strikes. And that has been the one issue that Chris Tillman has had is command and specifically command of that fastball. They wanted that pitch in. It was a foot and a half off the plate. And how about that? Yep. He tries the breaking ball nowhere near. Well, this is a guy that relies on pitching ahead in the count. And this year, you know, coming in, only four starts, small sample size. But he's been about a coin flip when it comes to first pitch strikes. And that's not how he's going to be successful. And on the ground, handled by Davis, unassisted at first. So one away here. Unusual to see the Rays. Hit first here in Tropicana Field. You see, these are the starts you referenced early, and look at the contrast. Yep, and his best start of the year was that opening day start against the Rays. Almost closed out seven innings and six and two-thirds, one earned run. Pitched well against Boston at Fenway Park, but Toronto Blue Jays have had his number here in the early going. Here's Steven Sousa, Jr., It's a ball. One and oh. One and one. You notice the Rays wearing their road grays. So from that perspective as well, the Orioles the home team, the Rays the visitors. Another curve. It's two and one. And according to rule two in the Major League Baseball rule book, the home team is the team on whose grounds the game is played. So this will count as a home game statistically for the Rays. And not until Monday. The statistics will be, you know, it, it'll be Baltimore home statistics through the ball game Sunday. When that's over and they go to Monday, then they'll revert. Yeah, there you that's go. even stranger. <laughs> so it's still a 2 2 count. I, 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 let me show you the, the, the numbers that are going to matter at the end of the day. Right, right there. there. You don't care about any other number except for those. Susan. 
Out on strikes. Slider got him. And a few more housekeeping tidbits. See the home and road uniforms. The ticket proceeds go to the Orioles. Great stats count as home stats. They'll finish the season with 84 home games. And uh, both team mascots in attendance. And walk-up music played for both teams. That's the most important factor of all. We must have walk-up music. There's a strike. Cabrera. And mascot hijinks. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, they'll choreograph something together. All part of an intensive negotiating process to get this game underway. Y you know what I'm impressed with is the fan turnout. And, and, and where they are in that lower bowl. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a festive crowd. <laughs> one ball, one strike. And this gives you the opportunity to come down and maybe sit in some seats that you wouldn't normally be able to. That's right. Tickets sold on a general admission basis. Headed toward left center field. And on the run, Diazza makes the catch. Well, Cabrera made a bid for an extra base hit. Diaz had denied it. We go to the bottom of the first, scoreless. Baltimore coming in to hit. Buck Show Walters lined up, presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Alejandro Diaz leads it off, followed by Jimmy Paredes. Then Delman Young. Adam Jones hits cleanup in front of Chris Davis. Then Steve Pierce at second, hitting sixth. Manny Machado, the third baseman, seventh. Everett Cabrera is the shortstop, and Caleb Joseph will bat ninth and catch. Well, making his 2015 debut was right-hander Alex Colome. You know, he was delayed into spring training with visa issues, had a bout with pneumonia, was sent out, had two starts with the Charlotte Stone Crabs, two starts with the Durham Bulls, and is deemed ready to go. That last start with Durham, I believe he threw 65 pitches. He says he could get up there between 90 and 100. We will see. Here's Diazza, Colomay's first pitch, and that is a fastball for a strike. Well, Colomay, in brief appearances with the Rays over the last two years, has shown a very healthy arm. We've seen them both in starting roles and relief roles, six starts and a couple bullpen appearances. And still a rookie, even though he was in three games in 2013 and in five games last year. He has a total, in terms of innings pitched in the big leagues, of just under 40, 39 and two thirds. One and two. 
and you need 50 innings to go beyond 50 then you could no longer qualify as a rookie but he certainly is has maintained his rookie status that's a strike Bianza out of there couldn't pull the trigger well, let's take a look at the Rays defense as it lines up here tonight brought to you by BMW in the outfield left to right we have Geyer Kiermaier and Souza Jr. across the infield third to first Longoria Cabrera Forsythe and Loney with Rene Rivera behind the plate. Look how he stays behind that fastball it stays true. Right now sitting in that 93 94 range good firm live fastball. Jimmy Paredes. One strike starts him with the fastball. Well, he came off the disabled list in mid April and has thrown up that line already. I'll tell you what, this is the highest scoring team in Major League Baseball. 5.6 runs a game, getting contributions from everyone. Well, they're doing that. Number one, without Weeders, Matt Weeders is on the DL. And without a couple of big bats from last year in Cruz and Marcakis. And Steve Pierce is below the Mendoza line in average, and JJ Hardy is on the disabled list. Yep. And yet this team has scored, you know, let's see, six or more runs ten times, and in 70% of their games, they've scored at least five runs, 14 times. They're still hitting home runs for Buck Show Walter. The Dodgers have hit more. The Reds have hit more. But the Astros, the Yankees, and the Orioles coming in to play today, each team with 29 home runs to lead the American League. That will be fair. Colome is going to have to cover. Two gone. I, I love watching James Loney down at first base. The way that he goes after ground balls and the way that he uses the bounces, knowing how much time he has. He did a great just backing up on this instead of getting aggressive. He knows he's got time just back up now turn nice feed. Just an excellent feel for the position. Yeah, he handles that first baseman Smith the way a really accomplished middle infielder handles that small glove that they play with on the infield. Just a, an extension of his hand. Delvin Young into center field. Kiermaier trying to close. It's going to drop in front of him. Sousa cuts in to make the pickup on one hop. And Young on the first pitch drops a base hit into center. Well, this is right off the end of the bat. You'll see it right here. Maybe even cracked that bat. Didn't sound good. But you can just see falling into no man's land. No one can get there. Man at first with two outs and Adam Jones. Well, he's the guy who really has consistently led the charge offensively for the Orioles. Look at these numbers. He's hitting 400. He's among the top five and runs batted in. Second in slugging percentage, third in on base percentage. Cut the miss on the slider. Strike one. Well, the most newsworthy for me is the fact that Adam Jones, as we sit here today, is on pace to walk 40 times this year. Yeah, and for him, that's like walking 100 or 150 times because this guy is so aggressive. His job in his mind is to drive in runs, not necessarily to get on base. And he's up there trying to produce runs in every at bat absolutely right and he said listen I'm aggressive I'm going to swing the bat and that's just the way it is and you know opposing pitchers know that thus far they've been not been able to exploit him and you know the other thing that he's done this year which is impressive is cut down on his strikeouts for as, a, if, as free a swinger as he is his strikeouts down over his normal rates a good 20 game start here for Adam Jones. Foul ball. Right now, that fastball from Column A, 
93-94. We've seen the change up at 85. He'll drop a curveball every now and then, but he's got that wipeout slider that he really will try to take down and out of the zone. Good hand speed with that pitch and sharp break. Ground ball, short stop. Cabrera is tossed to first in time. Base hit, the man left. We're headed into the second inning, no score. Longoria is going to lead it off. Evan Longoria will open inning two here. A really big matchup, Longoria and Tillman. And look at the numbers for Evan. Six home runs. He's 14 of 36 head to head against Chris Tillman. He homered off him in his third at bat of the season here on opening night. And he takes a strike. Just sometimes there is a hitter that you struggle with and a hitter that sees the ball coming out of your hand better than maybe anybody. And Chris Tillman is that guy. And he's tried everything with Evan. When you watch his sequencing, he's tried the fastball up. He's tried sliders. Nothing consistently has worked. And it's so often gets into a pitcher's head like this when it goes as deep as this thing has gone and you've tried everything it's tough to you, you tell yourself I would imagine just to try to start over there's a well hit ball on a line going to be caught by Diazza and Longoria is the first out so he retired him he did the line drive yeah that ball was well struck and, and you know Dwayne when you get into those types of scenarios you really have to go back and look at what you're doing against this guy. You know, I, there were different guys in my career that would get off to a good start, had trouble retiring them. And then I'd go back and look at, you know, eight or ten at-bats, and I'm like, well, I don't pitch this guy in enough. And then all of a sudden you make that adjustment, start popping some fastballs in, make him uncomfortable, and then the worm starts to turn. So you really have to go back and just examine what am I being predictable with my sequencing? Am I just making poor pitches? You know, it could be that. Just the one one mistake you make every at bat, he doesn't miss. Yep. And that, this one had gone on 36 at bats. Right. Yeah, that's a track record, and then some. Two and zero oh on James Loney. Tillman had a one, two, three first. Longoria has lined out here in the second. Strike. Well, took a while for the Rays up at Yankee Stadium in Wednesday's game, but Aloni got 
Hit the base hit in the 13th to score. Sousa Jr. And now it's three and one. And the Rays had a couple hits in the sixth inning of that game and didn't get one until the 13th, and that turned out to be the game winner. 3 1 is skied to shallow left. And Biaza handles that one. Two gone. James Loney would love to see that pitch again. That was a 3 1 predictable heater, straight as a string, right into the wheelhouse, and he just missed it, and he knows it. Those are the pitches that have been hurting Chris Tillman in his couple of bad starts. Those have not been missed very often. Logan Forsyth takes a strike. Forsyth had a hit off Tillman in the opening day game when the Rays dropped a six to two decision to the Orioles. He's got that one run off him on the Longoria home run and there's strike three to Forsyth. Breaking pitch in there one two three to an inning and a half no score. you by Toyota. Let's go places. By Sea Dew. Sea Dew Spark, the most affordable watercraft on the water, starting at only $49.99 or as low as $79 a month. And by Grow Financial. Don't go through life, grow through life with Grow Financial Federal Credit Union. The big shift is on. And the big first baseman, Chris Davis, in the batter's box to face. Alex Calame high with the fastball. Well, you see Logan Forsyth out there. Evan Longoria. Always aggressive on that shift against Davis. Check and a foul ball. One and one. And he started to heat up just a little bit. That that day game that they had against the White Sox with no Fans he homered three run homer in that first inning the Orioles jumped all over the White Sox in that game scored six at the bottom of the first cruising to a win in a long home run to right they did have about 50 fans outside the yeah. ballpark looking in so he, he hit one in their direction 
What a surreal day. Mm -hmm. Just the different sounds, stuff that you never hear typically during the course of a ball game. Foul balls rattling around in the stands. You could hear the announcers. Adam Jones said in center field and then hitting, he could hear the broadcast of the game. Crazy. Not on the PA system. He could hear them doing the game. <laughs> Wafting through the crowd. No crowd. <laughs> Reverberating off the concrete base of the stands. Full count on Chris Davis. Steve Pierce is on deck. Strikes. Nice slider gets him. Second strikeout for Colomay. Well, let's go back to Wednesday. And for that game, the Orioles played in front of no one. Just a game of baseball with no crowd at all. Except for those 50 fans. They really were, I guess, the latest coming of the not whole gang looking through the fence out there in right field. Want to know the count on Pierce? One and one. Pierce hitting just 196. About a week and a half ago, he was in such a stayed at the plate. He, he just said he was completely lost and just out of the lineup trying to find himself as a hitter again in the right and this one caught by Sousa. And, and it's hard to believe the way he swung the bat against the Rays. I mean this guy looks like one of the greatest hitters of all time against the Rays and when you heard he was struggling so much that he wasn't even thinking about getting it at bat just doing work on the side trying to find himself yeah I mean we've only seen this guy great mm -hmm. and and by the way against a pretty good pitching staff yep. I mean he, you know the Rays run out you can look at the numbers last couple of years the staffs that they run out and he has gone right through them and he Machado fastball away well you're right I, you think about the pitching staff the Rays have had here Including this year, count seven years running. There have been some great pitching come through here. And he's just had his way with most of the Rays staff. Speaking of that Rays pitching, you know, you, you still have, you know, Colome comes back today, but you, you still have, you know, Matt Moore and Alex Cobb on the disabled list when you start talking about the Rays starting pitching. Their starters are second in the American League in ERA. That's pretty it, amazing. It, isn't it, it really is what they've been able to do without some of their big guns. The way they've pieced things together. That's why we were talking the other day. You hate to lose any arms because you know how precious and important pitching is. But for the Rays, the greater loss turned out to be Loney and, and Jaso now on the 60 day. The Rays cannot afford to lose bats. Fortunately, They've had to mix and match and do some creative things, but the pitching has held steady. Three and one. Well, these these guys, there's so much talent on, on the pitching staff and depth. We've seen that come through, and they're so well prepared. You know that they're mm -hmm. the, the pitchers on the Rays staff know how to follow a game plan, and the game plans that they are given are very good great idea of how to get these guys out base hit through the hole three one fastball and a two out single Stuff the game plan with bad counts and you go a fastball away here doesn't quite get there and not a terrible three one pitch you're just trying to get back into the count and Machado able to rope it into left field. Herbert Cabrera, the switch hitting shortstop. Adding 250. 
Coming over from the National League and the San Diego Padres. Geyer's there for this one on the first pitch. Fastball. Base hit and the man left on to the third. No score. With the Rays and the Orioles. Let's take a look at the Toyota trend for Chris Tillman. Pitches 1 through 30. Very good, but it seems to go downhill from there progressively. Well, and you know, the other thing that he has struggled with mightily, and the Rays have not been able to take advantage of yet, that's the leadoff hitter to an inning. His on base percentage against the leadoff hitter to an inning coming in was over 500 at 524. So he's handed you a lot of times every other inning a guy out there at first base. That's a tough way to pitch, and that will wear you down as you see with those numbers by the pitches thrown. You're constantly working out of the stretch and having to, you know, a lot of base runners, a lot going on. That takes a toll. Yeah, and you put the leadoff man on. It's a 50 50 chance you're going to score. You do that enough, you should get a few runs against an opposing pitcher that allows that. Kiermeyer fouling out to Machado to lead off the third. That's seven in a row retired by Tillman. I was going to say, forget leadoff runner. The Rays were just like a base runner at some point. There's Brandon Geyer. Geyer hitting 213, but that on base percentage is still up at 345. He'll walk, he'll get hit by pitches after the first one, and he pops it into shallow center. Jones makes the catch, so two quick outs in the third. In the game tonight at all season long, Tires Plus donates $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. Well, the Rays catcher, Rene Rivera. Ball no strikes all well, the way that Tillman attacks these hitters. He has stayed true He likes middle of the plate away against the righties and the lefties especially early And the way that see the way that he's able to drive that pitch out there the angle that he creates Very difficult if he gets to his spot. It's those pitches that leak back over obviously he's going to get hurt on Out of play, that puts Rivera down at the count. 
And I think that's why you've seen this raised lineup. First of all, they've seen Chris Tillman quite a bit. And the second thing is, is they know what he's going to try and do. And so they're aggressive early on those pitches out over the plate where they can try to get some extension and drive the ball. Two and two. Well, coming into this start in 19 innings, he had 19 or 13 strikeouts. He'd walked 13 hitters. And that also has given him some issues as he's gotten off to this two and two, but a 758 ERA start. Well, you take the 13 walks and you add it to the 22 hits. That's 35 base runners in 19 innings. It's almost two per. No base runners so far through three as he strikes out Rivera. Bottom of the third, scoreless. Making his first start in 2015. Here's what pitching coach Jim Hickey was going to look for early in this game. Just watching his delivery a little bit, watching that he's not running away from the ball, that he's not falling off the mound to one side, which would kind of indicate that he's overthrowing maybe a little bit. They're just trying a little bit too hard. Uh, you know, he's got really good stuff, as you know. He's got a good, powerful arm, and all he really needs to do is get it uh, in the strike zone and have some success. So uh, hopefully that's what he does. Hickey said he would be looking for about six innings and 90 pitches tonight, guys. So far, so good. 13 pitches in the first, 15 in the second. And the first pitch here to Caleb Joseph. Outside of all no strikes. That's the big thing with Alex Colomay is he's continued to progress as a starting pitcher. It has been command. As his command has come more under control, he has really blossomed as a pitcher. The fastball dropped into right center and a leadoff single for Joseph. But Joseph. An interesting case here, a fellow who had been in the minor leagues for a while. You got Weeders with a big club in front of you, and you think, well, you might be stuck here. Injuries got into the big leagues. He did a nice job behind the plate last year. Good job throwing out base runners. And he's hitting now off to a really great start. He's hitting 327 on the year coming into this game. Another one of those guys in this Baltimore lineup that has chipped in offensively when some of the, the bigger names, the bigger guns are either out of action or not performing to historical standards. These other guys have shot to the forefront, and that's why this team continues to score runs. A strike to Diaz. The other thing about uh, Joseph quietly, he led the American League and caught stealing percentage of all the catchers last year. Was second in the major leagues to uh, Yadier Molina. He had over 38 percent caught stealings last year. And between him and Matt Weeters, you, j you would just control the running game. He's picked up for Matt very well. 0 to the count to Diaz, and the guy facing the Rays tonight 
recently in recent times he just doesn't give up any stolen bases. You know, if you go back the last two seasons and then even add on the how many innings now? Three, so 22, 435 and two thirds innings. His last 435 and two thirds, he's given up two stolen bases. How's that? As a right handed pitcher, mm -hmm. that's absurd. And when he first came up, there was concern about him controlling the running game. Well, there's no concern about that now. Zero. One and two, the count to Diazza. Three singles allowed by Colome. This one here to lead off the third. And he has Diazza. Out in front, Diazza says, wait a minute. I fouled that ball into the dirt. And Buck Showalter is going to come out to take up the argument for Diazza. And he may have. This was awfully close. It's probably going to be really tough to tell. Yeah, I don't know if there's going to be anything there that you would be willing to challenge. So Diazza. Vacates the plate area and now Showalter likewise. Strikeout number three for Colome. You know, and going back to what we were talking about, Dwayne, with that controlling the running game, how important is that going to be for teams going forward as you start to have more athletic teams, more teams mm -hmm. that, you know, want to take advantage of, of, of speed on the base pass to try to steal some some bags, uh, looking for different ways to score runs. And if you could take that opportunity away from these teams, I mean, that's one facet of the game that you control from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. What a huge plus. Well, we've seen and we witness it almost day in and day out the kind of games the Rays play. All close games, oh, yeah. tons of low scoring games because of pitching and defense. One and one. I think the next Change thing up. that you're going to see are because of all these shifts is guys learning to use the other part of the field. Mm -hmm. You know, look, look at what Mike Moustakas has done with the Royals. He right now almost has as many hits to left field as he had all of last season. Mm -hmm. He's raking. The yep. Royals are raking. But they've taken that use the whole field approach, take the shift out of it. Two balls and a strike. Well, that used to be the approach to hitting for almost every hitter with the exception of maybe two or three big guys in the middle of your lineup. Mm -hmm. Then it got to a point where everybody who could pick up a bat, you, they were swinging from their heels. Everybody was a big guy oh, in yeah. the middle of the lineup. Didn't matter. <laughs> Two on the count to Paredes. And I think you're right. We're seeing a shift against the shift. And that means if you spray the ball around and hit it everywhere, that's how you're going to counteract it. It's like anything else, it's like any other sport. You know, there, there's a, a change that's made. It has a lot of success. And then the other side of the ball, or the other side, you know, whatever it is, tries to figure out a way to combat that. And that's the only way that you're going to do it. To keep pulling the ball over into the shift is absurd. Liner in the center. And the Kimar get it. He did. He made the catch. Kimar challenged the sinking line driver. And Paredes is out. Kimar popped up looking at first. He was selling it nevertheless. And Tim Timmons over from third base running out there made the call on it. Well, here's the thing, too. A play like that, you talk about do or die, diving straight in on a line drive to center because if that ball skips by him, I mean, they're still running. And he's able to get that glove underneath it, make a heck of a play. The excitement follows Kiermaier wherever he goes. Well, listen, he, he'll take some interesting routes out there in center field, but his makeup speed, when you watch him, mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, he's quick twitch all around. So as soon as that ball comes off the bat, he's moving. And maybe the one step is just a, a little bit in the wrong direction, and he's able to recover 
and close ground as well as anybody in the game. Well, you know what they say. There's nothing like makeup speed. Amen. One and one to count to Delman Young. And he'll, you know, he'll give you a courtesy jump every now and then. He'll church things up a little bit, make it look even better. That one, he had to dive, and that was, that's a tough one, man. Diving to you know, left to right is hard enough. Diving on balls straight in is the toughest. Back to the mound. Colomay's got it. No runs. The leadoff hit the man left on base. Here we go to the fourth. No score. On to the fourth inning we go. Capture your favorite Mother's Day moment at Tropicana Field with the Rays shared moments picture frame. Come out Sunday, May 10th. The Rays play the Rangers and all women receive the picture frame while supplies last. For tickets, call 888-FAN-RAYS or visit RaysBaseball.com. Top of the order for the Rays, David DeJesus lines it into center. And that stays up for Adam Jones. Well, a couple of center fielders that can go and get him. Adam Jones, one of the best in the game. The best center fielders are not timid, especially on line drives like this one and the one that we saw Kiermaier charge in the bottom of the third. You can't be. I mean, you're in the center of the defense. You've got to cover left, right, behind you, and close. That's why, obviously, speed such a big deal with center fielders and you're right you have to make split second judgments and go Steven Souza Jr. Cutting the miss a little bit of Joseph on the backswing off speed had him out in front You know it's amazing too it, it, getting the chance to play for Buck Showalter and the way that he looks at the game he used to take his outfielders, and we, we would do it too just to see if we could, out to the different outfield positions, left, center, right. And he would have you stand during batting practice with your back to home plate. And the sound of the ball, the crack of the bat, mm -hmm. you could point and tell where that ball was coming. It, it, it's bizarre, but once you started to get the hang of it, you could hear that crack. Okay, that's to the right. Oh, this one's right on me. I better turn around. This one's to the left. Just some a, a drill that he would have his guys do. Any edge, and that pitch is on the edge. Sousa caught looking. 11 in a row, retired by Tillman. There's that fastball away, and the way he's able to drive it to his spot, he's been able to do that for the most part all night here so far, and that's why you see the Rays scoreless and still looking for the first base runner. As Drupal Cabrera. He 
Cabrera made a bid for at least a base hit, maybe more, with a line drive headed into left center field in the first, and Alejandro Diaz had a nice play on it to catch it. Diaz, a late season acquisition last year, right at the end of August. He's played well for the Orioles. Three and nothing to Cabrera. Evan Longoria is on deck, and we give you a look at his numbers lifetime against Tillman. Three and one. Ball four. Rays get their first base runner. And it will bring up Longoria to face Tillman. That's not at all what Chris Tillman wanted. A two out walk to bring Longoria. We've already talked about his numbers against Chris Tillman. Well, and we're getting into that past 30 pitch mark. He's in the mid 40s right now. So let's see if any of that starts to have an effect. And a little piece of the fastball. He just got a little bit of it and fouled it. <laughs> so the Rays with the base runner. And now Longoria. Tries to see if he can get something going with two outs. He's gone 87 plate appearances now without a home run. Line drive over the head of Machado toward the corner. Cabrera hitting third. Montoya will wave him around. He will score without a play on the double by Longoria and the Rays lead. Boy, almost a, a miscommunication on the part of the Orioles on how they were going to attack Evan Longoria. Your left fielder, Deaza, was way off the line, and they're pitching him in. All Evan's got to do is drop the head. Once he clears Machado, Deaza is nowhere to be found. That ball just going to roll and roll and roll, and Cabrera's running, obviously, with two outs. He's able to come all the way around. So the walk turns into a run of the double by Evan Longoria. Evan's fifth run batted into the year on his eighth double. Here's James Loney. Another man in scoring position and a curveball stays wide 1 and 0. Another two out opportunity for the Rays and. Boy, well you've got a man out there might as well pick him up too. One and one. Maloney hit a fly ball to left his first time on a pitch he thought he should have driven. He does have one home run off Tillman and three of his career hits off him. Two well, balls and a strike. Well, this is interesting. Here's Diazza way out there in left center field. And so they play him off the line and pitch Evan in. Kind of backwards. Off the plate away. Three and one. Logan Forsyth would be next. Count is full. Tillman will strike away from 
Loney. First base is open with a right handed hitter next and there's another pitch away and it's foul out of play. Sixteenth career start for Tillman against the Rays. And the Rays have taken a 1 0 lead in the fourth. Minor in the left. That's going to be in for a base hit. And here comes Longoria to the plate, beating the throw. 2 0 Tampa Bay. Well, how many times have we seen it? James Loney going the other way. You got a full count, a breaking ball. Tillman's trying to go outer half with it, and it just hung up there. Look at James Loney, just so fluid, balanced, and just shoots that ball out there. Evan, a great jump, two outs. And the Rays strike here again. This started with a two-out walk, a double and a single, and the Rays have two runs. He kept working Loney away. And you just felt that if he stayed out there as a matter of time and he got a pitch he could line. That's that's what Chris Tillman has done. And maybe that's why when you look at the pitch breakout and why things start to go south, it becomes too predictable. Sticks with the game plan, doesn't really make the adjustment because that is. And again, you're here going, you know, middle of the plate away. That's how he works. Occasionally you'll see him come in, but almost not enough to really make a difference. Pushed him to 20 pitches here in the fourth. Logan Forsyth takes it for a strike, and it's one and one. He threw those first two fastballs in on Evan Longoria. I don't think it matters to Evan. I think he sees the ball coming out of his hands so well that he may as well just intentionally walk him next time. Just put him on. <laughs> Ground ball grabbed by Machado. Throws a strike to first. Forsyth is out and so are the Rays. But they come up with two runs. Longoria's double. Drove in Cabrera from first. And Loney's base hit. Got Evan home. 2 0 Tampa Bay. Rays lead 2 0. Join Evan Longoria's Miles from Moffitt race team, Team Longo, to help raise money for life saving research at Moffitt Cancer Center. Sign up and receive a free Team Longo t shirt while supplies last. Miles from Moffitt race day, Saturday, May 9th. To learn more or to sign up, visit milesfromoffitt.com slash Team Longo. Raised with two in the top half of the inning. Now the middle of the order for the Orioles in the bottom of the fourth, starting with the cleanup man, 
Adam Jones. Alex Colome starts him with a good solid fastball around 94. Well, how about that Rays offense? I mean, Chris Tillman retired the first 11 that he faced, was not making mistakes. And then Cabrera's at bat got away from him. And before you could blink, it's 2 nothing Rays. Opportunistic. That's going to be the key for this offense all season long. Mm -hmm. They're not just going to be able to sit back and 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 bang with guys. I mean, yep. they may do it from time to time, but for the most part, they're going to have to take advantage of every opportunity. And I think that's why Kevin Cash has been aggressive with this offense. He's not a sit back and wait guy. So they've been a little more aggressive than we've seen in the past, which makes this team, I think, more fun to watch. Yeah, no doubt. And using some of that athleticism to try to put pressure on a defense. One and two. Well, the Rays finished April with a winning record under Kevin Cash. A ball, two strikes to Jones. The chase. Breaking ball. Curveball and Jones is strikeout number four for Colome. Well, there's that slider. Look at how long that pitch stays in the strike zone. That that pitch is above the knees, looking like it's coming right down the heart of the plate, and then all of a sudden it takes that nose dive right out of the strike zone. Say that's that's the key. The the late break. On breaking balls. Yep, and he took a little bit more off that one. And typically, you, you take a little bit of speed off, you get more break, more depth. It's Chris Davis. One ball, no strikes. Sell it. Mm -hmm. nice. Off speed. Change up there by Colome. 82. The arm speed was tremendous. The ball, two strikes. Well, this is the First outing this year for Colome. Make those rehab starts in the minor leagues. One out into the fourth. He's looked pretty good tonight. And that'd be another big lift for the Rays if he could continue this through his pitch limit tonight. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> great that, idea. You know what? They, great idea and great execution. This should be strike three, uh, hands down. Backdoor slider right there. Mm. Well, the one thing we've seen from Titchener tonight, he is not calling that pitch at the bottom of the zone consistently at all. There's a strike. Came back with a fastball. Davis caught looking. Now he got into Chris Davis's head there because how in the world do you take that? Not looking for it, that's how. <laughs> so back-to-back -to -back strikeouts. Five in the game. Here's Steve Pierce. That's foul driven a long way. Strike one. Yep.
Pierce line to right his first time. Two. I'll tell you, Colome is making some good pitches. We, you know, the, we, we talked about his command and how much it's it's gotten better. You know, he's had parts of four seasons at Durham, mm -hmm. and the walks per nine innings have gotten better each and every stop there. And you see his mechanics try to simplify things to make that delivery more repeatable, and it's working. Fastball is fouled back. He's in the mid 50s in pitch count right now with two outs in the fourth. Well, he's got that under control so far. Quick, tidy innings. And he takes care of Pierce. Wow. Some very good pitches in that inning. Strikes out the side. 2 0 Rays. Great moment in Rage history presented by Geico takes us back to Fenway Park on this day last year when the Rays swept the doubleheader at Fenway for the first time in franchise history. Not easy to win there, and it feels good when you do. Yeah, especially a double dip. It's a good long day. Kevin Kiermeyer takes a pitch low. A ball, no strikes. Rays batting in the top half of the fifth. This is not the first time that baseball has had a situation where essentially the home team, as defined by the rule book, has batted first. Happened a number of times. The most recent. In 2013 at Pac Bell Park when the Giants batted first against the Reds in game two of a doubleheader that was a makeup of a game rained out on the 4th of July in Cincinnati and the Giants won that game five to three. This foul ball to count evens on Kiermaier. In June of 2011. The three game series was relocated from Sun Life Stadium to Safeco Field. Kiermeyer is out on strike. And this one, the three game series. Right now, let's go down to Todd Callis. 
Stoyne, you saw the Australian Grant Balfour at the end of your Geico great moment in race history. Well, a little news today heard from the Aussie, and he says he's going to sign a minor league deal after being designated for assignment. He's going to report to the Durham Bulls. Basically, guys, will have three or four weeks, see what he's got. He hopes to pitch again here with the Tampa Bay Rays, but here's a guy with an all-star game under his belt, over 500 appearances, deciding to start again at the minor league level. Back to you. Well, that's an interesting development, and you know, it used to be not all that uncommon, but a little more uncommon now, and it's great to have him go down and see what's left. Yeah, you know what? Hey, listen, he's a proud guy. It didn't like the way things ended, yep. and you know what? You still feel you can pitch, and you have the opportunity, then then you go for it, and, and what you end up using to drive yourself in this situation is, I'm going to sign a minor league deal, and I'm going to go to Durham. But I'm pitching for 30 teams. Mm -hmm. You know, with the way you're pitching, everybody's looking for pitching. If there's no spot, you know, with the Rays for me, maybe some other team swoops in and grabs me. But he still feels like, you know, he's got something to offer. And you, you got to tip your hat to that doggedness. And the way this game goes and, and the things we've seen with this club in the last few years, you never know. You truly never know. Really? And, and that's why if you've got a chance, if you still have that hunger and that drive, you just got to keep going yep. for it. You never know. You're, you're so right. Stay in the game. Stay in. How many stories have we we come across every couple series? A story of a guy who was about ready to give it up. Then there was an injury, got a promotion, and has never turned, you know, has never went back. And so you know, just keep playing. Listen, it, there'll, be, there'll be plenty of time, you know, when nobody wants your services anymore. <laughs> so while you can still physically do it, you yeah, go do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, another foul ball. So Geyer battling here with the count at two balls, two strikes. Brandon Geyer checking into Caleb Joseph's catcher's <laughs> mitt, making sure that ball was not in there. Fouls it again, boy. This is one of those at bats that Geyer can put on a pitcher to really frustrate him. He'll get down, and before you know it, he's even the count, push the pitch count up. Another foul ball. We were talking about uh, Grant Balfour. Signing a minor league deal. How about Ryan Madsen, who's out in Kansas City? Here's a guy who had Tommy John surgery in, I think, 2012, set out a couple of years. He tried to pitch in a minor, then didn't pitch at all. And um, a little tapper down to third. Fair, barehanded pickup. Not going to be in time. Boy, Geyer kept that at bat going. Has himself an infield hit. And Machado did everything he could do. Geyer safely aboard. Well, you battle, you battle, you battle. You put the ball in play and give yourself a chance. And you're right. There's a play by Machado. Nothing else he could have done. Bare hand, quick throw. Too much speed up the line. Ten pitch at bat right there. I, I get back to Manson. I think he was giving pitching lessons. And Jim Fergosi Jr. saw him. I think he had originally signed him years ago and said, I think you can still pitch. Yes, he can. He's with the Kansas City Royals. How about that? How about it? Best bullpen in baseball. Well, Rene Rivera. A ball, no strikes. Well, we just came from New York. Wasn't it Chris Martin that was working like at a Home Depot? Yeah, he, yeah, he had a couple of jobs like that. Yeah, I see ya. <laughs> He's only throwing 95 right now. He may have been at Lowe's. I think it was Scott Atchison that was at Home Depot. <laughs> By the way, he's still going strong. He is. He did get roughed up a little bit the other day, but you know, even the best that happens to every now and then. Yeah, just proves he's human. Still one of our favorite guys. 
He saved us up in Boston. <laughs> Whatever, I, I mean, that game where they just ran in guy after guy who had no idea where the strike zone was, mm -hmm. just not even in the same zip code. Yeah. And then Atchison just came in there, had up, you know, jersey probably a little bit too small, no sleeves, and just went about his business carving people up. Yeah. Ray's winning a, in, a, in a laugher, and you're just like, he saved the day. He's hard not to root for, regardless of who you really root for and whatever team he's on. Oh, close at first, boy. Just got that hand back in there. Yeah, and the throw was high, and that's what allowed Brandon Geyer to sneak back in. They had him. They, oh, leaning. They had him, but that throw up. Long way for the tag. Hey. Yeah, I know. Hey, don't but, stop showing no. that. Yeah. <laughs> this is not looking very good. There he goes. Swing and a miss. Throw down, and he is out. That's why no you don't doubt. run. That's yeah. why you don't run on Tillman. Yep. I mean, 400, closing down at 440 innings. He's given up two stolen bases, and here's Brandon Geyer, and this really isn't that close. What a runner is now one of five this year off him, I think. I mean, just nothing to do except wait to tag him. And now Rivera is out on strikes. A couple strikeouts in the inning for Tillman. Bottom of the fifth coming, 2 nothing Rays. In the bottom of the fifth, he has made some very good pitches tonight through the first four. You, you try to think at how many pitches he's left out over the plate, and nothing comes to mind. I mean, he has been good on both sides of the plate. You see how that arm side fastball there has been good. He's been able to take it away from the righties, as you see right there, that slider out of the zone. Well, I'll tell you something. His first start for the big league team here in 2015, and it's been a dandy so far. And no walks. That always a, a key for Alex. Just shows uh, the continuing maturation of of Colome as a starter. Manny Machado leads it off and lifts a fly ball toward left center. And Kiermaier's there. Geyer kept coming, but Kiermaier finally made the definitive call and the catch. Shortstop, Kevin Cabrera. Everett Cabrera. One out in the fifth. One ball, no strikes. 
Brandon Gomes is throwing in the Rays bullpen. One out into the fifth. 57 pitches from Colome. I think he made 60, what, 65 mm -hmm. in his last outing. There's a strike, and the Rays talking about around 90 pitches for him maybe tonight. Well, he's got a lot of room. Just 58 so far. Yeah, you wonder if he's going to be able to get to 90 because look at the, the strike ball ratio with the clean line. He hasn't pitched in a whole lot of trouble at all. Down to first. He'll cover first and takes the toss. Two gone. And yet you got the bullpen up. So you, you wouldn't think that you're going to get to 90. You're not even at 60 yet. You've had as, uh, as clean of an outing as you possibly could have. A nice job by Loney there again, reading, taking a, a step and a half back to get the good hop and then the feed. Got to go. Right side. That was my favorite part of spring training. Covering first drill. <laughs> hey, you go around that field for the next 20 minutes and just <laughs> cover first. <laughs> it wasn't even so much covering first. It was it was their way of working in a little bit of conditioning. That's all it was. And you felt so good when you completed it. Oh, absolutely. After taking that 304th feed from the first baseman. Caleb Joseph hits one high back into straightaway center. Caught out there by Kiermaier. And another one, two, three inning. Nine straight retired by Colome. The matchup Alex Colome and Chris Tillman and Colome through five has made only 60 pitches, allowing three hits, no walks. Ray's got their runs in the fourth, the two out walk to Cabrera, then the double by Longoria. And Loney followed with a base hit to get Evan home. So we move into the top half of the sixth. And the Rays come into bat leading two to nothing. Never give up on an inning. David DeJesus, top of the order, takes ball one. DeJesus lined to center his last time, 0 for 2. One and one. Two balls and a strike. Sousa on deck. And 
into foul territory and a nice running catch by Diazza. He had some hang time but he had to cover a lot of ground and still get there and you get down near the bullpen. You're never quite sure where you are in relation to the bullpen mound. Well, yeah, and that's the key. You, you got that low wall out there that's, you know, it's got the zigs and the zags. You've got bodies down there. You've got the mound. Oh, by the way, you've got to keep your eye on the ball because of the roof here and run all that way. That's a tremendous play by Diaz, and David DeJesus can appreciate that, although he, you know, he doesn't like it. That's a tough, tough play. There's an 0 for 2, a couple of strikeouts tonight. And there's a soft breaking ball in for strike one. High pop up. That ball hit part of the rigging and comes down in fair territory. Ooh. And Todd Tishner is going to call that a foul ball. Where it hit, and here comes Buck Showalter. Now, that's the key. Was it fair or foul? And Tim Timmons is going to get on in on this conversation. Well, they've got a better angle on it than we do. And I guess they're going to satisfy Buck Showalter. Oh, there's a break. Yeah. <laughs> they, you can see, I mean, he's tracking it. Pitch foul back, so it's still 0 2. A lot of rigging up there, and there's a there's a white extension up there. And if it if it hits up there and it's in fair territory, it's in play. If it's in foul territory, it's a dead ball. And so in Todd Tishner's opinion, it hit in foul territory up there. Swing and a miss. Sousa Jr. out on strikes. Slider got him. And I think Tishner got it right. But it's from this angle. It's close. It's close and difficult to tell. But I think if we stood down there where he was, we would have the same impression. Anyway, he convinced Buck Showalter along with the. Uh, Tim Timmons. Yeah. So. No, the one thing we, deal. the one thing we do know that ball was not going to make it into the stands, so it probably would have been caught anyway. Yeah. Pierce oh, well. gets an assist on this one. Cabrera is out. One, two, three, go the Rays.
out of the game after five innings and boy was he outstanding. I think he made 65 pitches in his last rehab start in the minors. And I think if you were with us here Jim Hickey talk about 85 90 pitches maybe in that neighborhood. Well 60 how's 60 doing. They were 60 great pitches I'll say that you know. Yeah, and, and you wonder why obviously he's not back out there as clean of an outing as you can have. He wasn't pitching out of trouble. Three hits, no walks, six strikeouts. And, you know, you, you, you want to stretch him out, you know, 65 last time. And if he's pitching effectively, you're right. You heard Jim Hickey say you had another 25, 30 pitches in him potentially. And instead he's out of the game. And now the, the Rays bullpen has to eat up four innings at least. And Brandon Gomes pitching to Alejandro Diaz who held up on that pitch in the county's one and one boy I'll tell you uh, he was outstanding tonight five innings Diaz lifts a fly ball for Geyer I'll tell you what number one I, 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 I. Kevin Cash has to be as nervous as anybody because when you make this kind of decision you, you better work and you had better win. Yep. You know, that's a tough call because you're right. He was absolutely dealing. Well, you know, we've seen before it's a team call, it's an organizational call. I don't know about this, we're not for sure, but like the other night with uh, uh, Drew Smiley, mm -hmm. four and two thirds, 80 pitch limit, he had 79. See ya. And I, I really, and we talked about it at the time and, and in the aftermath of that, Paredes takes a strike. Now, um, I, I really appreciated uh, Kevin Cash and the way he handled that when he said uh, he knew how Smiley would feel. Base hit. And Paredes goes to first, even to the point where he said he apologized to Smiley, but organizationally that's a decision they've made everybody's on the same page that's what they're going to do yeah okay fine that's great I mean uh, and I think I think by that approach he builds capital with a guy like Smiley he says look I apologize for that but those are the rules around here my hands are tied on this yeah one. I, I think okay and he's you know he's not trying to explain it away he's just honest and upfront with it and I, I think ultimately I think his players will respect him for that. Yep. Yeah, I think you're 100 percent right. I mean, you you don't have to like the decision if you're Drew Smiley. In fact, I'm sure that he hated the mm -hmm. decision. But when you've got and you know a stand-up guy managing your ball club like yeah. Kevin Cash mm -hmm. that just comes and says, "Hey, listen, I know you don't like this. I don't want you to like this. If you were happy with this, I, I, I you know, it's yeah. not the kind of guy I want on yep. my staff." Yeah. But I completely understand, and, and he was up front with them, and that's all you can ask for as a player. Yeah, and that, so that's why I, I think these guys, I, they've already shown they like playing for him, mm -hmm. and things like that certainly would reinforce that feeling. I think that's a great sign in a young manager who's, who's never managed before, but he's not so far removed from the playing experience. You know, he's sensitive to those things. I think that's important. He's done a couple things like that that have been impressive early in his first month of managing ever, which is amazing. You know, managing people, managing relationships, and just being upfront, honest, open door, approachable. Yep. Not going to try, you know, that's just, like you said, players respect that. I also I, I love the other day when he said look uh, we didn't walk McCann that's on me. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Oh, two two on. to Delman Young into shallow right Susan Jr's there for that. Two and oh. So those are all good signs that I people ask well how can you hire a guy who's never managed well, because of those things. That's and he's. Obviously been around the game knows the game, but he also apparently knows people as well and and how to handle them and uh, that's that, those are really encouraging signs of a young manager. 
I think one of the other things that came into the Rays thinking is who's taking the hill tomorrow night. And that's Chris Archer. Mm -hmm. And as good as he's been, as deep as he's gotten into games, you can afford to maybe have your bullpen out there a little bit longer than you may like because of what work you count on him doing tomorrow night. Adam Jones, he takes a pitch down. And it could be, you know, this, uh, this could also be a situation where it's the up and the down. You know what I mean? The resting mm -hmm. in between up and down. So even though the pitch count well under control, and I'm sure that Colome, you, you know, would have been just fine in the sixth inning, but maybe that one extra up and down didn't want to go there. Ground ball short. Cabrera the second for the force. The man left, and we're headed into the seventh. Two nothing Rays. Exclusive on field seating in the Papa John's bullpen box. Osher group of 50 to 85 in this private party area and make long lasting memories. Reserve the Papa John's bullpen box by contacting group sales at 888 fan rays or email group sales at raysbaseball.com. Limited dates remain. Uh, Steve Geltz is up in the bullpen. Hey, you'd be right next to Steve Geltz. In that Papa John's bullpen box. That's where we should do our broadcast from. What an idea. I'll tell you, having done a couple from center field and a couple years ago, and Edwin Jackson threw that no hitter from out there, you could see just as well from there in terms of what the pitchers are doing. You just have to make a little adjusted calculation, but why not? Hey, there's food down there. You, you could talk to guys in the bullpen. Anything to be in the company of greatness. Yep. And there you are. One and one. The pitch is low to Longoria. Two balls and a strike. Evan followed by James Loney and then Logan Forsythe. Three one. So Tillman opening the seventh by falling behind Longoria, who has been a nemesis for him again tonight. Evan lifts it up the right side down toward the bullpen. And that's going to fall for strike two. Fell right on our set. <laughs> Look at that. See, if we were right there, we would have had a souvenir. How about that? A lot of goodwill down there. Very excited. Good vibes. That's why we need to go down there. It's where it happens, man. <laughs> Three, two. It's pop foul. It's going to be out of play. <laughs> 
3 2 again. And Longoria walks to open the inning. Evan heads to first. James Loney heads to the plate. Well, the middle of the order driving in the runs. Buck Showalter on the phone to the bullpen. Rays wanted to make sure that phone was operable. A little concerned the first time they were in, but they double checked it. And it worked for them. Now Loney lifts a fly ball into right. Going after that first pitch. Delman Young makes the catch. Yeah, and I think that uh, that Buck Showalter actually went out to uh, a hardware store or some and oh. picked up some walkie talkies. Yeah. That's right. It's Darren O'Day down there in the bullpen, but the Rays did go down and check out the phones. I mean, they're fair minded people. They want the opposition to be able to call the bullpen. They said, hey, they work, but, you know, use walkie talkies if you want. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Logan Forsyth after the first pitch, and he skies this one to center field. Back to back pitches. Two pitches, two outs. Follow the Rays all season in 2015 with the MLB.com at bat. Number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and a lot more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Kevin Kiermeyer looking for his first hit tonight. He's 0 for 2. That's a strike. Tillman starting to push 100. He has 98 pitches right now. Chopper to first. Bruce Davis takes care of that. No runs a walk and a man left. Middle of the seventh. Two nothing Rays. Moving into the bottom of the seventh, the Rays lead two to nothing. Steve Geltz coming off that five hitter, five strikeout performance in Yankee Stadium. Oh, I love what Kevin Cash said too when he went out to get the ball from him. That Steve was like, "Hey, listen, I, I I can keep going. I can keep doing this." He said, "You know, you you've done enough for today. You can manage next week, but but today we'll just take the ball from you. And you go ahead and hit the showers." But he was awesome. Yeah, in that ball game, he's the T-Mobile game changer. First big league start, first big league win, his first big league save. Struck out five against the Yankees. 
Yeah, why not? He can manage. That's it. That's all that's left. He's facing Chris Davis. Throw an off speed pitch. Missed one and oh. Davis, Pierce, and then Machado. One and one. Well, he's just so thrilled to be in the big leagues. You, you, you heard him when he talk, sat down with Tyler talking about his teammates. Just the, the feeling of being around this team and how everybody pulls in the same direction. And more than willing to fulfill any role he can. Coming out of the bullpen, starting a game, whatever he's asked, he's fine with. Yeah, I'm out there on the mound getting outs. I don't care when it is. No honey. Gets Davis looking. Davis out on strikes for the third time, and Geltz picks up where he left off in his last outing. And, and you know, Chris Davis, he went down looking his last at bat, and here again, look at this, right down the middle, not even a thought of swinging the bat. In fact, that did he get it off his shoulder in, in any pitch that AB? There's Pierce. Wow. I was too busy going over Gelsey's stats for this year. <laughs> well, but you're right. He's another guy who's easy to root for. He's from a one stoplight town in upstate New York. And as humbled as you can be. And effective. Yeah, grateful for the opportunity. And boy, I'll tell you. He's making his mark out of this raised bullpen, which you thought coming into the year was going to be a strength, especially when you get Jake McGee back mm -hmm. and everybody moves down a, a spot. But boy, oh boy, with, with the emergence of, of Geltz, you talk about shortening the game with Jepson and Boxberger. When McGee comes back, a lot of good work being done out of that raised pen. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Now Manny Machado. I don't know. Colome for five. Five excellent innings from Alex Colome. Gomes worked one scoreless inning, and now Geltz is in there picking up the corner. It's one and one. Again, strike two. One and two. And strike three right there again with a fastball. Two strikeouts in the inning. On to the eight. Two nothing Rays.
summary brought to you by Gold and Diamond Sports. The Rays through seven, lead two to nothing. Both runs coming in the fourth on the RBI double by Evan Longoria and a base hit from James Loney. Alex Colome making his first start of the year. He was excellent for five innings, six strikeouts, three hits. And we go to the eighth now. Darren O'Day will take over on the hill for Chris Tillman. Ninth appearance for O'Day. Brendan Geyer chops it to third. Machado tries to scoop, recovers, and throws too late. So Geyer is aboard for the second time. Well, Manny Machado getting a quick jump here, trying to get to this ball and get the short hop. And you can see right off the edge of the glove, never makes it into the pocket. And at that point, you're not going to get Geyer. Rene Rivera. How about this statistical anomaly with Darren O'Day? He's given up one earned run, but two home runs. For the first. I don't see that very often. Mm -hmm. Kevin Jepson up in the Rays bullpen. Fouls this one. Well, he's got two runs on three hits in seven innings off Tillman. He struck out seven, walked a couple. Down to third, Machado to Pierce. Pierce to first, so Pierce. In his first game at second base, turns a double play, 5-4-3. And then Brandon Geyer trying to bear down on him. You can see the the grin on the face of Steve Pierce. Has never played second base. First start there in his career. And here you go. Pretty good. You know he didn't get a ground ball until the sixth inning. And now he's in the middle of a double play here in the eighth. And always a little bit more unnerving for a second baseman turning a double play because you're blind. You're going to the bag, the runner's bearing down on you. Where at shortstop, everything's in front of you as you, you, you go to turn the double play. You're coming across the bag, you got a good view of first base. Second base can be a little bit more unnerving. Strike the count to David De Jesus, who's looking for his first hit. And down on the count to O'Day. 0 2. Chopped to third. Machado high throw. And De Jesus will hang on at first. Ball caroms back to Davis near the coaching box. So the Rays get another base runner. Now Manny Machado a little bit lax there defensively. Was going to rely on arm strength and never got the hand out in front here. And this ball just sails. Good velocity, bad location. It's the sixth error of the year charged to Machado. And it gets Steven Sousa Jr. to the plate in the eighth. Not the cleanest of innings for Manny. Well, he could get the double play started. Strike one. I don't like Sousa Jr. going with the. Uh, the striped stirrups look mm -hmm. right in the middle. Did 
you see TJ House yesterday? I was watching a little bit of the uh, the Indians game. Yeah. And uh, he was, of course, was starting against uh, Toronto. And he had the, the, the stirrups that you haven't seen since early, <laughs> mid-'80s. Mm -hmm. Solid look. Not very comfortable looking, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's good to see every once in a while. Well, you'll see Archer mm -hmm. tomorrow night go with the stripes, and, and, and that thing comes up at the back of his shoe within the first inning or two of the game. Yeah. Archer goes tomorrow against Miguel Gonzalez. And that's a strike, two and two. Sweeping breaking ball by O'Day right at the bottom of the strike zone. Those have not been called consistently here tonight. That one was. Runner goes and a swing and a miss. Souza is out on strikes. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Two nothing. Sun Sports is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. By courtesy Toyota, you'll love what we do for you. And by Checkers, get Checkers authentic Philly cheesesteak or try the new meatball sub. Pick yours two for five bucks. Kevin Jepson on the pitch here in the bottom of the eighth for the Rays. Remember Cabrera leads off by looking at a fastball near the mid 90s. Strike one. Well, great start to the season for Kevin. Nine games in that ERA under one. Seven strikeouts, just one walk. That's something that we always highlight when you get to the back end of a bullpen you're talking about a setup guy a closer and you cannot afford to come in and walk guys and Jepson has shown a very good strike throwing ability quality strike throwing ability and he comes back with that curveball and strikes out Cabrera let's check in with Todd well, Dwayne, as the Rays go through their bullpen, the logical guy for the ninth inning would be Brad Boxberger. Now, that might be shifted up a little bit when Jake McGee comes back. Today, he pitched in his second game in a rehab assignment. Start of the game for the Charlotte Stone Crabs. Won an inning, walked a couple, struck out one. Originally, Jake thought he only needed three or four outings. 
But hearing Kevin Cash talk before the game, he wants to see him go back-to-back -back games. He wants to see him go with an up-down, have one inning into the next where he sits on the bench in between. So it might be more than three or four outings. But when McGee comes back, it's both been even stronger, guys. Boy, it has been strong for sure. And we've seen a parade of those arms out of the Rays bullpen tonight following five excellent innings from Alex Colomay. Right now, Jepson one and one to Joseph. Two balls and a strike. It's Tommy Hunter down in the bullpen for Baltimore. Two and two. Here's what's coming up tomorrow on Rays Live, the pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. We'll hear from Chris Archer. And the preview from inside the Rays, Kevin Cash. Full count to Joseph. Top of the order, Alejandro Diaz is on deck. Forsyth to gone. Strike out in the ground ball. Well, back around to the top of the order. Red Sox batting in the bottom of the sixth inning, leading the Yankees two to one. Of fouls it into the screen. New York started the day 13 and 9 with Boston and the Rays each 12 and 10, Baltimore 10 and 10, and Toronto 11 and 12. Already bunched up in the East. Well, they've been all playing each other. This American League East just a, a big round robin rumble. First month of the season. And I know at the beginning of the year there were some folks concerned because of all the Yankee uh, or all the Rays injuries, and they played so many games against the Yankees and and eventually the Red Sox and Orioles early and the Blue Jays that they, they were concerned playing the East that much that the Rays somehow might get buried. But actually, if you play each other as much as all of these teams in the East have played each other. You have a chance to happen exactly the way it's fallen out here, all bunched up. And the Rays have managed to stay above 500 through all of the injuries. Diaz went for that one in the dirt. Rivera's going to have to throw him out and completes it with a toss to Loney. We're at the end of eight, two nothing, Tampa Bay.
Tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by clean Chris Coors Light. Most games decided by one or two runs. The Mariners topping the list with 16. The Rays next with 15. The Rays have won nine of those. Most tied for most in the major leagues. And another one going tonight here in this 2 nothing ball game. Entering the ninth inning. Both runs coming in the fourth. Tommy Hunter hard throwing right hander makes his ninth appearance as Drupal Cabrera to lead off tries to bunt and fouls it strike one seven innings from Chris Tillman two runs three hits Darren O'Day one scoreless inning gave up a hit. It was Cabrera's two out walk in the fourth that keyed the two runs for the Rays. One and one. Hunter, 28 years old. He was in 60 games last year. And he finished strong. In his last 43 games, his earned run average was just under 1.8. Out of play. First out in the ninth. Well, Tommy Hunter just overpowering his Drupal with the heater. Ever since he's gone to the bullpen, he has really let that fastball fly up into the mid 90s as we see Brad Boxberger here getting ready for duty in the bottom half of this inning. Here's Evan. One for two, a double and a walk tonight. The pitch is a strike. His double. An 0 1 pitch lined over the head of Machado and into the corner and left. Gave the Rays their first run. One and one. Fly ball lifted into center. That's Adam Jones. Two gone. First baseman, James Lyon. So two up and two down. Brian Mattis is up in the bullpen. Singled home the run in the fourth. He's one for three, and the pitch is in there for a strike. Well, more and more, we see some outstanding arms out of bullpens wherever we go. The Rays have them, and we're seeing a big arm here in Hunter. Fly ball lifted again back into center for Adam Jones. Rays out in the ninth inning, bottom of the ninth coming. 2-0 Tampa Bay.
For more information on to find a participating dealer, go to FloridaKomodoDealers.com and buy your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. We move into the bottom of the ninth. The Rays hold a 2 0 lead, and Brad Boxberger on to face the two, three, and four hitters in the lineup. Most important numbers right there. Five save opportunities. And five successfully completed. He gets another one here. Jimmy Paredes to lead off. And the first pitch from Boxberger is a strike. Paredes has one of the four Baltimore hits in this game. Oh, two the count. And he got him. Fastball strikes him out. 11 strikeouts for Rays pitching tonight. By the way, immediately following tonight's Rays Live, our post game, stay tuned for extensive coverage of the Lightning as they take on the Canadians in the chase to the Stanley Cup. That's Lightning Live. Lightning up by a goal in the third. Delman Young takes ball one a little high. Chasing. You, you, you remember Brad Boxberger all last season when he really broke out. It was fastball changeup. Yeah. Well, he added the breaking ball in spring training, and we've seen a couple of them here already that are just filthy. I'll tell you what. That's fastball an interesting element up, to Kirk, add. Make huh? him a starter. Stretch yep. him out. <laughs> up the right side. Is that going to be fair? Foul ball. Well, he was reaching out. On that fastball and lifted it foul. Take a look at tomorrow's starter presented by Chevron. And how about that 0.84? It'll be Chris Archer against Miguel Gonzalez. And our coverage begins at 6.30 tomorrow. You don't want to miss that. When you talk about a pitcher who's got three filthy pitches and he has them all working right now. And that's Chris Archer with that fastball, the slider, and the changeup. Foul. Well, you see him break out that curveball. We saw it, uh, what, two times in all of last year, that curveball? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it, it less than. And if it was, it was like the first week or two in April mm -hmm. when he got called up to the big league. Yeah. And then he got going, and it was fastball, changeup, and see it. Well, and what made that combination so effective is obviously the pitches mimic each other, but he would have that fastball in the mid 90s and the changeup be 79 to 81. So he was forcing you to cover like 14, 15 miles an hour in the difference. And the fastball away misses. 94. Three two. He got him, struck him out. Delman Young chasing the fastball. Well, low riding that heater, and Delman Young trying to go down and get it goes down a little bit too far. Great location.
Well, two up, two down in the ninth on strikes. Four of the last five outs recorded by the Rays bullpen coming on strikes. Overall, the staff has 12 tonight. And here's Adam Jones trying to bunt, and he bunts foul. Adam Jones right there is thinking nothing more than do anything to get on base and give Chris Davis a shot. And so you had Evan Longoria playing deep, and he was looking to just drop one down and give Chris Davis a puncher's chance. Ground ball, third foul ball. That takes the count to two strikes. Grace put up two runs in the fourth inning. They got great pitching from their starter, Alex Colome, two five. Then Gomes, Gelch, Jepson, and Boxberger have all followed. Colome had six strikeouts. The bullpen has put up six strikeouts. And no walks out of Ray's pitching tonight. Jones back in, 0 2 the count. Fouling a fastball into the screen. Opening game of this series. Foxberger trying to get the tough Adam Jones ahead of him, two strikes. And he fouls it again, fastball. On the last couple of fastballs, starting to climb that ladder a little bit. See here if Boxberger continues that trend. See if he can get Adam Jones out of the zone up or come back. With that break ball, even mm -hmm. something that we introduced that early in this inning, and you're in an 0-2 count, sweep one right off the plate, and he had him reaching for that one. Did come back with a curveball. Now that was that. You know that you start to try to think along with a pitcher, and you go, okay, heater, heater a little bit further up, foul ball, foul ball. Okay, now you go, you come back with the, you know, the breaking ball that's been so good. Nice job by Adam Jones to fight it off. 16 pitches by Boxberger in this inning. 13 strikes. And there's ball one in the sequence to Jones. And Jones continues to battle. Curveball again and reaching to get a little piece of it and foul it. I'll tell you, Brad feeling very good with that pitch here tonight. This is the most that we've seen him use that. Makes sense. It's a team that you're going to see an awful lot of. They've already seen an awful lot of you going back to last year. And so you introduce that breaking ball, and now you've got three weapons. Mm -hmm. Three legitimate, I can get you out with any of them. Something else for Adam Jones and the rest of this Oriole lineup to think about. Got it. He went up, struck him out with a fastball. Rays win it two to nothing as Boxberger strikes out the side. Thirteen strikeouts for Rays pitching tonight. And here's the final out. Boy, right up at the letters, you just, you see it big, you see it close, and with the velocity that Boxberger features, you just cannot get there. And how about, how about this Rays pitching staff? What is that, 29 strikeouts in their last two ball games with the Yankees and then the Orioles? And they take the first game of this series. Well, they got a great.